Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to a recent Reads on Sunday. I haven't done one of those in a, quite a while um, and decided to do one today on the, what is it, 27th of September. I should know that because one of my best friend's birthday today. <sighs> brain. Um, I decided to do one today um, instead of a tops and flops video. Sorry about that. Uh, September was um, a reading month. I read quite, I, I read very little, for, for at least for me. I read about seven books, eight books maybe, if I finish another one uh, today. Um, and that, I mean, that's a lot for a lot of people don't get me wrong, but for me, it's about half of what I normally read, and I just didn't feel like there is enough to choose from in order to do a good uh, tops and flops. So instead, you get a recent reads, and now you're clicking away <laughs> because you want the tops and flops and you don't want the recent reads. No, you just want me to talk about books now, do you? And the first book I want to talk to you about um, is Gloria Naylor, not Gloria Gaynor, not Gloria Gaynor, <laughs> Gloria Naylor, The Women of Brewster Place, uh, first published uh, beginning of the 1980s. Um, Gloria Naylor was uh, an African-American writer. Uh, she was born in 1950 in New York, and she sadly died four years ago when she was only in her mid-60s. And this is her debut novel, as it says on the cover, a novel in seven stories. And I, I really, really enjoyed this book. Uh, enjoyed, maybe not the right term because it's quite sad. Um, I read this together with Heidi from my reading life. Um, and it's also the pick, uh, the September pick for uh, an online book club run by Barter Hortz, uh, where he uh, uh, each month we choose a book from his backlist. I will leave a link to both the channels down below. And if you're interested in the book club, uh, check out uh, Robert's uh, channel, Barter Hortz. There you find uh, more information. Anyway, so this is a book uh, told in seven stories. It's set uh, in then contemporary uh, uh, New York, so end of the 1970s, aboutish, um, and the seven stories are about seven women who all live together in this project, uh, Brewster Place. Um, the women are the stories are interlinked and the let's say the red thread the one woman who sort of holds it all together is the the woman of the first story Matty who comes to Brewster place after losing her house for various reasons and then you get uh, a glimpse of the life of each of these seven women um and like i said it's not a cheerful uh, a story. Um, there's quite some violence involved. Some of the women uh, experience um, very violent acts. Uh, but it, yeah, it's it's sad. But it's also um, very engaging. Um, Gloria Naylor, and I, again, this is her debut novel. Uh, has beautiful writing. Um, um, when I talked about about the book with Heidi uh, she pointed out one of the scenes that I also thought was really really powerfully written it's about gossip and the way Gloria Naylor uh, describes gossip and compares it with an acid odor it's just beautiful um, so I can definitely recommend that. I will also definitely read more by Gloria Naylor. Uh, this was my, my first experience uh, um, with her work and I loved it so much that I have to read more of her. The next book I want to talk to you about is a work of translated fiction. Here you go. Yun Koi Yun, The da Disaster Tourist, translated from the Korean by Lizzie Bueller. Uh, published in the English translation earlier this year in 2020, and I featured this book uh, in one of my TBR videos when it came out. The original Korean uh, was published seven years ago in 2013, and obviously, Yun Koi Yun is a Korean writer. Um, this is her fourth or fifth book. I've never read her before, so this was 
like with Gloria Naylor, my first experience with her. And the premise, I picked up this book because of the premise. That sounded really fascinating. Um, the the book is set in a in present day, but in a way in a dystopian future because um, um, uh, the main character, Yona, is that right? Yes, Yona, um, a young woman, she works for a travel agency, but not just any travel agency. This travel agency offers uh, travels to disaster areas, whole packages where you can experience uh, you know, an area that was hit by a tsunami, uh, sometimes uh, Part of the package is volunteer work, but it's also to just have a look. Um, and due to certain circumstances um, that I'm not going to spoil, uh, Yona, who's normally just selling uh, these packages, gets from her company, gets one of the most coveted travels uh, to a tsunami um, aftermath area. And then the story takes off from there. So like I said, I thought the premise was interesting, fascinating, but I didn't get along with this book very well. Um, the first thing that I didn't gel with was the writing. And I don't know whether it's the writing by the author or whether it's the translation. I can't uh, really judge that because I can't read Korean, so I couldn't you know, check the original. But the writing was very stiff, uh, very... Um, it felt very artificial, uh, didn't flow, um, but also the story didn't convince me. The, the Yona's adventures, um, they seem to be, you know, when she gets to this area and then all kinds of shit happens, of course. But it felt uh, like there was no story arc in a way. It was all very, and then this happened and this and yeah, I don't know. It it was just not for me. Um, it doesn't mean that this was a really bad bad book. But if I had done a tops and flops, it was this book was pro would have probably made the disappointments. But if you're interested in Korean literature and the premise, uh, try it out for yourself. Uh, maybe you get along with the book better than I did. The next book was also not really um, that much of a success for me, despite the fact that it was also a buddy read with Heidi, and that was Connie Willis' uh, Blackout, first published uh, in 2010. Uh, Connie Willis is an American author, mainly sci-fi, dystopian novel. She was born in 1945, and I've read only one book, by her previously, Passage, which I didn't like. It's about a near-death experience or more of a sort of dystopian uh, a book than sci-fi. Uh, but because she is so well-known, won so many prizes, I thought I'd give it another try. Um, so Blackout, uh, first of all, uh, there's a lot of information on the cover, isn't there? It's the winner of the Hugo and the Nebula Awards, and there's, of course, a quote uh, from a, a review, but what it doesn't say is this is actually the first part of a 900-page novel that she published in two parts. It would have been nice to know because, spoiler alert, this book just ends in the middle of the story. Uh, and I, I really hate, I hated that, that this wasn't made clear uh, to uh, from the beginning. I mean, it's said that it was the first part of a duology, uh, but that doesn't mean that it is actually one novel and that you, in order to finish the story, you have to read both books. And this is already something like almost 500 pages. Anyway, uh, the premise of the book um, is... Um, we are in 2060, Oxford, um, and time travel is a thing, uh, especially for historians. So historians go back to certain um, uh, earlier time periods in order to observe um, and, for instance, write a thesis about uh, the Crusades or, you know, about uh, other big events. Um, and the whole idea is that what you read about as an historian 
isn't really what happened. So you have to go there in order to see for yourself. And I thought that that was a really interesting premise. And then, of course, the twist in the story is that um, if you go back uh, as a historian, um, can you really just observe or does your presence there um actually alter history, change history, even if you don't do anything, you know, like uh, killing uh, Adolf Hitler. But just the the pure fact that you're living um, in a time period where you actually don't belong, um, does that change history? So these two things sounded really interesting. And uh, the time period that our time travelers here, we follow uh, five uh, different characters, four or five. Um, they all go back to World War II, uh, the Blitz, around the Blitz in London. Um, but the book was, first of all, extremely slow and very repetitive. And this almost 500 book novel could have been, in my view, easily could have been comprised into 200 pages. Um, and then you would have added the second book, you know, compressed that as well. And then maybe you would have had a good book. I mean, I enjoyed the parts uh, when they are back in London uh, in the mid-1940s. Um, that read more like historical fiction. And you learn about Dunkirk Kirk, uh, and, for instance, the, the ev evacuation of children um, uh, from London uh, during the Blitz. So that, that was really not uninteresting, but it was so slow and so repetitive and we didn't really get uh, much of these two premises, um, that there was no real development, certainly not with regards to the, the question, do we change history? I mean, the question was asked like a gazillion times in the book explicitly, but it was, yeah, it was just boring to me. And even though it ended in the in the middle of, actually one book, one story. I'm not going to read the second part uh, because it's it just didn't hold my interest enough. So unfortunately, I would have to had to decide after this second try that Connie Willis is probably not for me. If you love her work and there is a book that you think I should absolutely try, let me know down in the comments. But otherwise, I will just, you know, live with the fact that Connie Willis will not be one of my favorite sci-fi authors. And the last book I want to talk to you about is also sci-fi, and that is Maya Lunde, The End of the Ocean, uh, translated from the Norwegian by Diane Oatley. Um, it was published in uh, earlier this year uh, in the English translation and in 2000, I think 2017, let me check. Sorry about that, like I said. Brain, yes, 2017 in um, Norway. I've read, uh, this is part of a quartet, it's called Climate Quartet, uh, but um, in opposition to the blackout, it's like each book is a standalone, so you can read them in any order you want to, just to, you know, clarify that. Anyway, the first one in the series was History of Bees, which I read, I think, two years ago and really quite liked. So when I saw this was new and on script um, and I wanted to something, you know, fast paced, easy going in a way and sci fi or mystery then are my go to genres if I'm in the mood for something like that. Um, this one um, is uh, tackling um, climate change, uh, droughts, um, you know, the melting ice. And we have two timelines, 2019 and 2041. In 2019, and they are alternating. Um, uh, in 2019, we follow Sinje, um, uh, a Norwegian climate activist and sailor, and she is on a journey over the ocean by herself um, for various reasons, which will be explained in the book. So the, the one part is this journey, and 
in the course of the journey, of course, Senya reflects back on her life, um, uh, what happened, why she is on this journey now, uh, the reasons and how that uh, relates to climate change and especially uh, the melting of uh, glaciers and you know, ice. Um, and the other timeline, 2041, uh, we are, of course, in the future, and the Earth uh, uh, suffers from serious droughts and fires. Doesn't seem like 2041, uh, does it? And we follow David, um, a mid 30s uh, married man with uh, two children um, who lives in France and who flees. Uh, the burning city in order to make it uh, to one of the refugee camps. He is with his daughter Lou. Uh, she is uh, a little girl of five or six years old and while they flee they lose the mother and the young uh, boy, the baby boy. Uh, so we see David and Lou in the camp still hoping that mother and the baby will have made it, which, you know, it's hope against hope, um, and then we we learn, you know, the the bad turn that the earth took, and David trying to make a life for himself and his daughter, uh, and water is really uh, precious, and even in the refugee camp they don't get enough, and. And these two stories, Sinia the sailor, um, and David and Lou, you know, they they will. N not interconnect, that's not the right word, but they will have some connection, which will, you know, develop through the book. And I thought it was, you know, a good read. It wasn't, uh, it didn't engage me or fascinate me in the same way that History of Bees uh, did, uh, but it, it was good. It was entertaining despite um, the the premise and, you know, it's not, a, it's not a cheerful subject, but it was still an entertaining um, sci-fi read. So these were the book in my recent reads on Sunday that I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all still safe and healthy. And as always, talk to me in the comments. I'm looking forward to that. And I will see you all soon in the next one.